Welcome to the AZA Conference 2024 Recap Episode from Calgary. Hello, I'm John Rossi. I'm a touring drummer with a passion for animal conservation. When I'm on the road, I spend as much time as possible visiting zoos, aquariums, and conservation organizations. Now, I want to share those places with you. I'll be talking to keepers, vets, conservationists, anyone who can help me in my mission of connecting my people to animals through their people. Join me on my raw safari. Hi, hello, how are you? Welcome back to a very special episode of the Rasafari Podcast. Y'all, I am very pleased to be dropping for you roughly two hours after it ended a, a just an amazing recap of the 2024 AZA Conference here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And uh, we are going to be featuring 10 different people on this podcast, including me. You're going to hear nine other voices before this episode is over. And we cover all the bases. New guests, new facilities, returning guests. We've got a zoo director. We've got PR people. We've got zookeepers. We've got people who were zookeepers who have transitioned into leadership. We've got an amazing trainer. We are hitting all the things to show you all the different experiences of the conference. And I recorded these interviews as we went throughout the days. So you'll hear them kind of change in tone a little bit as we went from the first day to the the second day where, um, you know, there was this cool little social event that I got to attend afterwards that you'll hear more about to the third day, which had some great, great content. And then also Zoo Day. We got to go to the Wilder Institute Calgary Zoo, and it was amazing. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit at the end about some of my own experience, but honestly, a lot of that is thrown into these interviews. So I want to get to those. But before we do, uh, just a quick reminder, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. Uh, This would normally be where I drop a Zoo News episode on Fridays, and this is kind of our special version of a Zoo News episode since really there isn't much more newsworthy stuff going on in the AZA than our big conference this week. And um, also so you don't miss any of my Tuesday interview episodes, which are all, if you're new to this, much more long-form versions of what you're going to be hearing. So, uh, yeah, make sure that you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow along on the socials, uh, at Raw Safari everywhere, except for on the TikTok machine where we're at Raw Safari Pod. And don't forget that you can support the podcast for as little as $3 a month by going to patreon.com slash Raw Safari. So without further ado, we are going to turn it over to the first of many interviews you're going to be hearing. And uh, this was my roundtable conference with some of the team from the Edmonton Valley Zoo. Enjoy. All right. So uh, we're here, the AZA conference, and I am with the team from... The Valley Zoo Development Society. Yay! (laughs) Yay. Okay. So quickly introduce yourself. Uh, My name is Kelly, and I am the social media coordinator for the VZDS. My name is Tiana. I'm the donor engagement coordinator for the VZDS. And I'm Randall, the events coordinator for the VZDS. Yay. Um, we have to start with you, uh, Tiana. Yeah. Why have you never corrected me when, for, for, for calling you Tiana on, on Zoo News? <laughs> I say your name wrong. Like, <laughs> you send me stuff all the time and I say your name wrong and I feel terrible. Everybody calls me Tiana if they're from America. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I have a good friend who's named Tiana. So, it, it comes from a place of love. But I do apologize. Uh-huh. But yes, okay. So just real quick, we're just here to do a recap of, so today was Tuesday, and uh, for a lot of it was us, it was the first, like, main day at the conference. Um, So first of all, did any of you attend the icebreaker yesterday? Yes. We all did, yeah, it was great. Thoughts? Amazing. The Aurora Borealis, phenomenal. Calgary team, whoever set that up, you coordinated the sky perfectly. That was great. However they got Mother Nature on board on the events committee is amazing. It's you showed up for Canada. Yeah. You win. <laughs> Representing Canada with your Aurora Borealis. Yes. Very impressive stuff. Yes. Yeah. Food was great. Music was great. Free ice cream. Anyone do the Ferris wheel? 
We didn't make it to that. What, what was the thing that we did? We went on the swings. That was oh, great too. Yeah, that's fun. so much fun. It looked like everybody was just having a great time. So we had to get on there too. Nice, nice, very cool. Did you guys get the free ice cream? Because I saw some falling faces when I said ice cream. The line was so long. We tried. We made it back all the way until the end and it just never quieted down. So it must have been really great. Oh, it was awesome. It was worth the wait. <laughs> wow, way to rub it in. Come on I'm now. just going to sit here and tell you all that you screwed up. But, <sighs> you know, it's okay. It's okay. So um, I, I love to just get a quick look. Um, are any of you presenting at the conference at all? No. Or are we just here to take it in? Just taking it all in. Cool. I love time, that. Yeah. That's amazing. And are you all first timers? Yes, we are. Yeah. Amazing. That's so cool. <laughs> um, and so this is what, about two and a half, three hours away from your facility? Yeah, for sure. So we all traveled down yesterday in one big car and we piled into the opening piece and we all got into a house and now we're all here today. So we're up and at it. Yeah. I love that so much. <laughs> uh, and so, okay, let's talk about some of the sessions. Um, tell me one or two of the sessions that, that you went to. Uh, we'll just keep going in order. And um, what spoke to you? I really love the PR sessions. All of the marketing has just been so great. It's been awesome to connect with all of these different zoos, especially because as a Canadian zoo and as like a smaller zoo, it can be a little bit hard to get in touch with other people. So having this opportunity to sit down and like network with them and just be like, hey, what are you doing for your socials? Like, what can we do better? Like, how can we collaborate together? It's been just so, so great. And getting to see all of these new ideas, I have filled up a notebook and I'm going to just talk everybody's ear off later and be like, hey, what do you think about this and this and this? And they'll be like, whoa, I have to like calm down and like process my own day. So it's just been amazing. That's awesome. I feel like that's your normal vibe though, just from the little yeah. bit we hung out. Yeah, um, 100%. Yeah, talk, talk a lot and have to calm down. But I'm, I'm the same way. I mean, I'm a podcast host. I'm not making fun of you. You know what? We like but, a little bit of chaos here. Yeah, we do. I, well, and that's the thing. So, okay. So we'll pause for a second from the, the, the conference stuff just to, to talk. So I've gotten to know a few of you through Ross Safari and through socials and Zoo News and all the things. But this is my first time ever interacting with any of your team. And I've now interacted with all of your team that is here multiple times. And I mean, can I just say it? We're all besties. Like, Absolutely. I love the vibes of this zoo so much. And I haven't been to the zoo. I haven't even seen your animals. And I love it, which is insane. I think that whatever y'all have in the water up there or whatever it is, whoever is hiring people and whoever is developing the team and whatever are killing the game because I genuinely am loving all of your energy all of the time. And I love this industry. I do this podcast because I love this industry, but I have rarely, if ever, encountered when it's everyone. And I know it's just a, a small group of you that are here, but like it literally blows my mind and you all love each other. It's amazing to see. Like I was legitimately sad that I couldn't have lunch with you guys today because you're invited, but I was, I was meeting somebody and it made me sad. And then it ended up being great and I got an interview out of it, so it was all great. But I was so sad to walk away. So I just want to pause for a second since I was picking on you and just say like, I, I know I've said it to you individually, but like for everyone listening, like Edmonton Valley Zoo is just, uh, just an amazing group of humans. I am in love with everyone I have met from the bottom of my heart. So anyway, back to sessions. Yeah, um, I've been doing the donor and fundraising and membership track. And between the two sessions, although they're fairly dry topics of like databases and fundraising, which everybody has to do, it, the people I've been meeting and the conversations that have been have, like, had are revolutionary. And I'm surprised at just all the cool ideas have been coming across and really how well other like organizations similar to us, bigger than us by far. I mean, we're a small zoo compared to everybody we've been seeing today. Just how well they leverage things and how well they develop their programs and really learning from the experts who've been doing this forever. It's amazing to have this opportunity. It's awesome. Randolph, what have you been up to? Well, the last session that I was just in, I feel like I, I knew that it was going to be a good session, but I didn't expect to have such an emotional reaction to it. So I, the session was called, um, it was called Zoo Se Puede, I believe. And then it was about the Latinx boom in the zoo and aquarium industry. And so all of the speakers kind of talked about their backgrounds and three of the four speakers got emotional and they started, you know, kind of tearing up and they started getting choked up. They had to pause. And then what I found interesting was that the audience who, you know, it was a good diverse crowd. A lot of people were, you know, from that Latinx background 
but everybody took the time when, you know, they were pausing to take a moment and relive their stories and talking about their parents migrating to this, you know, to the States and not having those opportunities where it's like, I want to be in the zoo world, but I don't know how, I don't see anybody like me. And people in the audience would say, no, you're doing great. Good job. Like, keep going, like, take a moment, just pause. Like that was the first time that I felt such community in a way that I didn't expect that I would feel. And I'm not even Latinx, like I'm Filipino, right? And we're in Canada, which, you know, we know is a pluralistic, you know, multicultural society. But even then, the things that they were talking about, I was also reflecting on my experience being Filipino in this industry too. And even thinking about our zoo, there's not a lot of representation for people of color. And I think about like the people who have desk spaces and I'm like, I, I might be one of the only people of color that has a role that I do, but it's beautiful because now I can kind of shepherd in a new era and a new generation of people that are going to be like me and can see me and say, I can do that too. And then, you know, be part of it. And so they were talking about different cultural events and how they incorporated their like Mexican culture, for example. And it was great because even though we don't have the same population in the States as, you know, like they might for the Mexican community in San Antonio, for example, for us, we have, you know, our indigenous communities and we have so many different populations that are so well represented that for me, I was like, well, I can take all of this and it might not be exact, like I might not do the same cultural events, but I can apply that to any culture in our city. And I just, I felt so inspired and I really wanted to go talk to the panelists afterwards, but everybody also wanted to talk to the panelists. So I was like, I will find them at another time and just thank them and just say, even though you were talking to an audience, because they were saying, you know, in America and in the States, mm -hmm. but I wanted them to know, like, I'm coming from Canada in a country that's very multicultural and I'm still seeing some of that, that I want to break down those, those glass ceilings and kind of figure out how can we shepherd in more people that, feel as passionate right and they were just kind of saying there's just there's not as many opportunities and we kind of once we're in that role we get comfortable saying like oh you know what like no it's good it's good how we have it but really it's you know we can do so much better and i i just love that i get to meet people that also feel the same way where it's like you know what like this does matter and we should continue to expand and develop because there's there's talent and there's knowledge in different cultures that we might never know but we want to represent so I just, I felt so good after that. And I've, I've just been looking for them. I'm like, where are these panelists? I need to tell them thank you. And just thanks for inspiring me. That's amazing. And make sure you do. I know, Honestly, yeah. it is so amazing to watch them light up yeah. and watch when you have these conversations and when you make these connections. Yeah. It's, it, you will be giving back a lot by doing so. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's awesome. And I just want to point out really quickly that, you know, three different people, three wildly different experiences but it's all centered around the community and the people and how amazing that stuff is. It's less about, like, it's almost less about learning and more about connecting and then learning through the connections, mm -hmm. which I just think is amazing. Uh, is there anything else anybody wants to say? All right, we'll be back after this quick break. Did you see the Colombian government is spending almost $4 million to relocate Pablo Escobar's hippos? In Brazil, a school of piranha attacked and injured at least eight people at a beach resort. First fatal mountain lion attack in 20 years in California. Hey, it's me, Forrest Galante, wildlife biologist. You may have seen me on Joe Rogan's podcast or my various TV shows like Extinct or Alive or Shark Week. So join me and my friends as we break down animal news from around the world and discuss all things wildlife. Click here to unlock these animal mysteries. This has just been really cool. I think, just like you said, the biggest piece of that connecting is exactly the way that our team works. We work best by, like, sitting all together and throwing ideas out and being like, hey, what do you think of this? Or, like, how can we make this event better? Or, like, hey, I'm going to make this post. Like, what do you think we should do with that? And we just start throwing in all of these ideas, and it gets better and better and better. So sitting here in some of these sessions, it's just like taking these ideas and getting to talk to the people next to you or talking to the speakers or even getting together at the end of the night and just being like, let's dump it all out and like see what everybody thinks has been phenomenal. So I think we're all doing really, really well here and I'm excited to works, see what comes out of it. Sorry. <laughs> I feel like what works for us too is that we incorporate that silliness and just that fun in every conversation we have. So when we're brainstorming, we'll say jokes that, you know, are just silly and they're just our personalities and like they're how we would talk outside of work. But those often create the best ideas just because we were being silly and we were being funny. And there's like, wait, actually, you're onto something there. We're all laughing and it's like, wait, 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 take it back. We need to take notes on that, you know? So I think that works the best too. It's just fun. That's awesome. Yeah, no, the fun, the fun is so 
important, especially in an industry where compassion fatigue is real, where like I sit and do conservation messaging. And, you know, when I do zoo news, sometimes I have so many animal deaths and bad things that happen in good places to cover that I have to do it in time over time or else I'm halfway through an episode feeling depressed and I'm like, I don't want to make my own podcast now, you know? Having that energy and that fun is important, which is why we're literally doing this interview right now. I mean, yes, we had all met, but we're literally talking right now because another one of your team members had put on an orangutan costume that's over there (laughs) um, for the palm oil uh, sustainability stuff and was goofing around. And that's what caught my eye. And then I was like, oh, and it's all of you. And now <laughs> so yeah, keeping it fun is good. Awesome. Thank you all so much for doing this. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, happy to be here. Woo. All right. So tell me who you are. So Jeff Ebelt, Executive Director of Zoo Montana. Yes, good to have you back on the podcast. Yeah, always a pleasure to be here. And in person. I know, exactly. It's great. I, this might be my favorite thing about conferences. It's yeah. not all the cool stuff I learn. It's just seeing the people that I normally see on a screen. Right. In person. See him in flesh. I yeah. Agree. Handshakes and hugs, baby. I love it. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So how's your conference been? You know, it's been a great conference. And I, we were kind of talking a little bit earlier that it's kind of got a real kind of almost calm vibe to it, uh, which I kind of love. Maybe if that's the Canada coming out, who knows? But it's it's been great. Some great networking opportunities here, as it, there always are. And it's just it's just so great to get together with like-minded people that, that are here for the same reason. It's awesome. Yeah. No, I'm loving every second of it. Um, so... Uh, I, I see that you have been speaking. Yeah. So tell me about speaking. What have you been talking about? Yeah. So I was fortunate to be on a panel in the morning uh, with the crew of Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Um, I was so fortunate and honored to be part of one of their episodes on Blackfooted Ferrets, uh, which was a, an amazing experience, you know, to tell the story of the ferret because yeah. it is just a remarkable story. I um, mean, so I, I was asked to be on a panel to kind of talk about conservation and how we at Zoo Montana, you know, try to hit the, you know, I keep saying hit the kids. That sounds terrible. <laughs> I was try laughing to, so hard when you said. <laughs> You know, we reach the kids, um, how we reach kids in conservation. And, and you know, uh, there's there's a kind of a multi-pronged approach that we take to that at Zoo Montana. And really, it comes down to a couple things. One, doing what you're doing. You know, just getting you out there you, with your podcast or video or what have you, you know, and, and offering opportunities for people to learn about what our organizations are doing. And, and so, I mean, let me just stop there and thank you for the work that you do, getting the word out there, because it, it really is important. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. You bet. Um, you know, the other the other big thing that, that uh, we do is we really subscribe to empathy at Zoo Montana. And what I mean by that is understanding that wildlife um, is deserving of respect, right, and, and deserving of empathy. And we want to be sure that our guests at Zoo Montana know why our animals have to be at Zoo Montana and why we as Zoo Montana need to exist. Um, and part of that is also anthropomorphizing. And, and for a long time, in the zoo world, that phrase and that idea was really frowned upon. You know, we can't anthropomorphize animals. And I've just never really believed in that. I think you you can. Because if we can let kids understand that animals absolutely have personalities like we do, I think that's just going to create a better connection. Mm-hmm. You know, so not being afraid to do that. And and, and I will say that anthropomorphizing is, is coming back, it, yes. it, which is great. It's not something that we have invented by any means. It's something that we're seeing in a lot of zoos now. Uh, but we're not afraid to tell those stories and why those animals need to be there. That's really important to us. And then, of course, the importance of ambassador animals. Uh, and again, in our industry, the, the the idea of ambassador animals, it comes and goes. You know, is it is it okay to have an animal out in front of a crowd of kids? Well, in today's world, the animal training that's being done by our caregivers, that present choice to our animals and when these animals willingly partake in these programs then you have to believe that that animal isn't going to be too stressed out if it chooses to be a part of it and to me there is nothing more special than making a connection with anybody it can be a kid or an adult with an animal Um, for me my favorite thing to watch is a child or even an adult that's terrified of a snake touching that snake for the first time and watching how proud they are how nervous they are that's what it's all about a hundred percent. I, in my first season, um, I used to be an arachnophobe. Yeah. Okay. Literally small spiders, house spiders. I would run out of the room. If there was a spider in here right now, I would not interview in here. We'd find another room. Yeah, yeah. No exaggeration. And I knew that was stupid. So I worked on it and I would, I got to the point where I would touch house spiders and stuff. Um, and I kept, you know, trying to build up. And once I was calm, I spoke down with Park Zoo and I said, Hey guys, I'd love for my Halloween episode, my first, first year, uh, to come in and handle one of your, um, ambassador tarantulas. Okay. And I did it and it was 
magic. I love it. And I fell in love instantly. Yeah. And my fear went away so completely yeah. that the next couple of times I saw spiders, I had almost a sense of co- confusion because something was missing. Oh my and it took me a second to realize it was the fear that I had had for however many decades. I mean, this was something I had as a kid, yeah. you know, and it was gone. But I, my body almost expected it. Oh my and gosh. so I'd be like, what, why am I not flop sweating right now? That's oh, amazing. that's what it is. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And what, what a great story that is, you know? And, and for me, it was when I was in the sixth grade, I, I did a, you know, shadowing project and the gentleman I was shadowing put an owl on my hand. And when that owl hit my hand, mm-hmm. I had that magical experience. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm in this field today. So those experiences, whether it gets over a fear, it, you know, it, it charts the next course of your life, whatever it may be, they are magical. Yeah. And, and animals can do that. And it's amazing. I love it. I love That's that story. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. And um, I I think I have a slightly different take than yours. Yeah, sure. And, and my take is not that anthropomorphism is necessarily okay. Sure. But that the, the way we use the word anthropomorphism yeah. is wrong. Okay. Because... And it's a very subtle distinction. Sure. Um, and you can agree or disagree. I don't really care. You know, yeah, obviously, yeah, a great conversation. But... Yeah. Um, what anthropomorph- what anthropomorphism is other than hard to say for a lot of people is attributing any emotions to animals or anything like that sure. and like you said animals do have emotions yeah. now can we call it happiness that is the human term that we would apply to it but we know they're happy right we literally have like testing and can can tell from the reaction so like yeah you know maybe they wouldn't use the word happy but that's not anthropomorphizing to me to say that this animal has an emotion sure. that we actually know that it has sure. you know now i do think it can go past that into more true anthropomorphism which i actually also think is, is yeah. okay yeah especially with kids but like for me to see an animal see its keeper mm-hmm. and light up and get excited and run to the door. Yeah. That is a happy animal. That is a loving animal. That is an excited animal. And none of that is anthropomorphism. Right. But I feel like for a long time, this field treated that. Like, like that was the term that would be used. Yeah. And that's great just point. not right to me. Yeah, know? great point. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, you, uh, you just have to look as close as your dog, right? I mean, you, you, if you have a dog and when you get home and that dog is jumping on you mm-hmm. in its tail's wagon, you cannot tell me that animal is not feeling some sort of good emotion. Yeah, right? Whatever that may be. Joy. It, whatever you want to call it. It's yeah. joy. Exactly. So it, great take. And, and how, regardless how you look at it, I think attributing some of those human traits to the behavior of an animal, especially as we said for kids, just helps them recognize that better and understand animals a little bit better. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a fascinating thought and it makes me almost want to go back to get my PhD to do studies on animal behavior in that realm because it's just it's such a fascinating topic. It really is. Yeah, yeah no, right. very cool. Um, are there any, because uh, we could talk about this all day, yeah. but we are supposed to be talking about the conference. So, I know, right. Uh, are there any um, sessions that you attended that particularly stood out to you? You know, so I'm in the point in my career now, which I, I have to attend some of the boring ones. <laughs> so but a lot of the, uh, you know, the capital campaigns and, and what have you. And so um, I, I what I need to do is I need to go back to some of those animal behavior ones just to refresh my memory and, and, and you know, kind of get that energy back um, a, a lot. But I'll tell you, we just came, both of us just came back from... Um, it wasn't really a session, but it was a kind of a sidebar session on wolves. Yes. Um, you know, and it, I, I always enjoy talking about wolves because in Montana, where, where of course we are, um, it's a very hot button topic. Um, it does not, it, it, wolves are not seen very, in a very good light in Montana. And so I just love to see what other organizations are doing and, and Relist Wolves in particular that, that did this talk today. Um, you know, they're doing a lot of good work out there trying to, you know, help organizations, you know, do the right thing and, and give the right information, us being one of them. And, and, um, you know, I just always enjoy that. But that said, you know, all the sessions I go to, it's just, it's so great to hear what other organizations are doing, what's working for them. Um, you know, as a small zoo, the only thing I, I would like to see more of at these conferences are more tracks for those little micro zoos yeah. like Zoo Montana and your, you know, some of those Dakota zoos are tiny. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see a little bit more of that because it's hard to go into a, a uh, you know, a, a campaign discussion where they're talking about a $150 million campaign. I mean, that's just never going to happen right. in Montana. And so I just, that's the, if there was one criticism, that's it. I just want to see a little bit more focus on the, 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 
the little zoos out there. No, that makes sense. I was in a one of the PR things today, and uh, Paige Hale, who I love at Georgia Aquarium, yeah. we've become great friends. Yeah. She is a wonderful human. Um, she got up and she was speaking about their experience with TikTok and Instagram and all this stuff. Yeah. It's very relevant to what I do and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But she started off, and I was pretty impressed. She goes, so I just want you all to know that I am aware of the fact that I'm at the Georgia Aquarium. We have a seven-person comms team. Three people do our social media, and I am aware of that fact. And so some of what I'm going to say, if you want to ask afterwards, I'm happy to talk to you about how to scale it down or whatever. And I was like, that was really cool because yeah. I could, you could just see people being like, seven people? Yeah. We don't have seven people at our zoo. Right. <laughs> we barely have seven staff. Yeah. Totally. That's awesome. And, and I love that. And I love when large organizations, you know, the, the personnel, and, and most really do, they understand that. Mm-hmm. That, yes, that we are very fortunate that we have this. Um, and to recognize that, that means a lot to somebody that runs a small zoo. Yeah, I'm sure. And speaking of running a zoo, there is a director's dinner. And I am not allowed to go to it as I don't direct a zoo. What is that like? Uh, it's, um, you know, we, we sit around and, and uh, we show our ch- each other our diamonds and we drink, we drink yeah. whiskey and mm-hmm. smoke cigars. Yeah, no, honestly, <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody thinks it is. Honestly, it's just an opportunity for us to network. It really mm-hmm. is. And, and what we do is we, uh, you know, we obviously was at the, at the, uh, the Calgary Zoo. We sat around, ate a, ate a delicious dinner and just talked, nice. you know, talked about the things that you know, we're, we're facing in, in zoological parks and um, what are we doing that's working, that's not working. And, and it really is just a great networking evening is really what it's all about. Um, I've come to enjoy that, that, that evening quite a bit just because it allows me to get in the room with some of these you know, bigger directors that may not, I may not approach here at the conference, whatever reason, um, and to just get us all in, in the same room. And I love that. That is really yeah. cool. Yeah, no, I think that's fascinating. So I go to something called the Muckety Muck, okay. which is for PR people. Ooh, and yes. it's the same idea. And it's, it's last year was the first year that I went. And that is where I met Paige and so many other people. And then that opened up so many connections for the podcast. It's been an amazing year because of going and yeah. I can't wait for tonight. But I will tell you, no one talks business there. Yeah. And that was, I walked in like, I was Gambit of the X-Men. I had my cards ready to just throw out as fast as I could. And I was like, and literally, you know, as I'm seeing these people, I'm like, oh, I've emailed that person. Oh, I, I want to email that person, but I was afraid. I'm going to go over there and I'm going to be like, hi, John Rossi, Russell Party Podcast. Let's get you on there. Love it. And no one, everyone was just like having a drink and chatting. And I was like, read the room, <laughs> do the Art thing. Man. And I ended up being friends with a lot of these yeah. people, which then led to them. And that led to you know, that's yeah. it. You know, and if there's one thing that I've learned of being at these conferences for, gosh, probably almost 20 years now, um, is that I wish I wasn't so shy at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and just get out there and start talking to people because these are lifelong friends. They are individuals that, you know, you will have to bounce ideas gripes, you know, we all have issues and, mm-hmm. and sometimes it's nice to talk that out with other, other folks that have been through that. So just not being afraid, whatever field you're in, whatever you're looking at doing, get out and talk to people, you know, and, and I know that everybody I always talk to, they want to talk back. And so yep. just don't everybody. be everybody, everybody. Exactly. The other thing that's been funny for me is this year, um, and I know we were talking about this before, but I haven't needed to approach as many people as, as I have in the past. I'm known enough now, which is amazing, yeah. but people have been approaching me. Um, but I've had a couple of times where I did want to approach someone that I didn't know and, and put myself out there. And I'm very content to do that. And a couple of times now they were like, Oh, I was hoping to talk to you, but I was afraid to approach you. And I was like, first of all, that's ridiculous. Second of all, that's really cool. And I'm going to, you know, it's flattering. Yeah. yeah, It's very cool. But also like, what a great reminder that there were two people sitting there wanting to talk to each other. And neither one of us was super comfortable approaching. And luckily yeah. I did, or else that opportunity would have been completely it would have missed. Been. And you would have never known yeah. it was there. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's a great reminder. So yeah, like you said, anyone who's listening to this, whether you're at AZA or whether you work in a different industry and like zoos, but go and do a conference once a year or, you know, whatever it may be, do the thing, talk to people. It can be scary. Even for somebody who's gregarious enough to have a podcast, it can be scary. I was almost nervous to ask you to do this because it has been a long day yeah. and we're towards the end of it. And we've talked, you've been on the podcast. We were yeah. already chatting. Right. And I still like paused before being like, can I have you for 10 minutes? Um, and I knew you'd say of yes. Of course. But like, 
there was just that thing of like, you're busy. It's been a long day, yeah. good day. Yeah. Um, but, you know, yeah, just ask. Just yeah. ask. And just ask, exactly. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to say? No, I think it's great. Uh, you know, and, and again, kudos to you for, for all that you're doing. Okay. Um, you know, getting the word out there for our, us organizations. And, uh, you know, zoos are, are an amazing place, are amazing places, as you know. And, you know, we're all working for the same goal, and that's to save species. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, if we put ourselves out of business, that'd be a good day. Yep. You're right. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but I think that's something we'd all be okay with. Absolutely. Thanks. Man. Yeah, you bet. Absolutely. Pleasure. Okay. So tell me who you are and uh, where you work. My name is Christine Steffens, and I work at the Aquarium of Niagara in Niagara Falls, New York. Woo! We, we do things together. I volunteer there. It's so much fun. And it has been so fun to see you here at the conference. Likewise. Yeah, I've really enjoyed seeing you outside of the aquarium. Honestly, it's been fun. Um, so how has your conference been? It's been great. Really enjoy being in Calgary. Um, I was given the opportunity to present uh, during the value of a visit, communicating during construction panel, uh, which I really appreciated. I really value uh, the effort that the team at AZA has made this year to represent smaller organizations at this conference. Um, it can be easy to see the really exciting, you know, $150 million projects and campaigns that other facilities are doing. But, you know, to be able to scale something down into something digestible for a small facility like ours, it, it made me really proud to be able to represent that. That's awesome. And I think you did a great job because I came and watched. And um, you were speaking about, in particular, about the, the sea lion habitat upgrades that are happening and how you've navigated that since our sea lions are obviously one of our biggest draws. They're why I'm volunteering there, let's be honest. Um... And so uh, I just, I thought that was a really important message and I thought you delivered it really well. Uh, one thing that I appreciated was that you're, you were, you're transparent about that some of the, um, some of the messaging and, and the campaign that you're running right now kind of came together pretty fast. It wasn't a really super thought out thing. You put a lot of thought into it, but it was very quick and it came together quickly. Um, and is, is it working? Does that feel good? It does. You know, when you have a small team, small nonprofit, like a lot of things are very ad hoc and, you know, come from these brainstorming sessions that you have as sitting around a conference table being like, what can we do to make this better for our guests? And to also get our messaging across as a conservation organization. So we want our guests to know that we're doing the best that we can, can for our animals. And that in includes what could otherwise be perceived as kind of boring exhibit upgrades. So, you know, just being really transparent about that, um, that's the direction that AZA is going and that I really appreciate because I think showing the public everything that we do to really lean into animal well-being and everything that we do to provide the best experience for our animals is, is just really important for our guests. Absolutely. And are there any sessions that you attended that really stood out? Yeah, so... I attended the Making Something Out of Nothing tonight, um, and I appreciate that. There was uh, Seneca Park Zoo, I believe, hasn't had um, a new uh, exhibit or new animal introduction since, I think, 2019. Um, forgive me if I'm wrong on that, uh, but St. Louis Zoo, um, Seattle Aquarium, before they just opened up their new um, expansion. So talking about ways that you can really lean into your animals and the things that make them unique and also your partnerships that you have in your community because everyone wants to be involved with the zoo or aquarium and, you know, maximize the cute content, right? I think um, Becky Bingham from Seattle Aquarium said, you know, you are the good news. You have the good news in a world of things that are really hard to look at and listen to. We have the things that are going to make people optimistic about the future and that's that's great. <laughs> That's beautiful. And did that make you feel optimistic too? Were you like, yes, that. It did. It absolutely Good. did. Yeah. Because we're doing really important work. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, you know, I mean, you know my journey from not mm -hmm. at all in this world to the Instagram, to the podcast, to now volunteering there and now being involved with Safe Red Panda. And it comes entirely from the amazing people that I've met. And that is my favorite thing. And as I plugged in more and more, as I became more of a thing in the, the world of zoos and aquariums, and then as I actually started volunteering and sorting fish at your aquarium at 7 o'clock in the morning, which is a time I didn't even know existed before then, I have not been let down for a second. Nobody and at no time has anything let me down. And that's amazing. And I'm not saying everything's perfect everywhere, but the, the people are so focused on the animals and care so much and love, love it so much and 
there's so much good and positive. And every time that I'm at a sea lion presentation up top, you know, with the crowds doing nets, and, and I just see the joy and the, I just, I, it, it, it catches my breath now as much as it ever did, even though I'm old hat now, right? And when I'm away, like I've been gone for all, it'll have been six weeks since the last time I volunteered when I get to again because I've been working and now conferencing. I miss it. I miss, I miss the animals. I miss the people. I miss the energy and the joy. I miss the fact that every time I see you, you light up. Every time I see Eric, Eric lights up. It's not just the animal people. It's everyone. I think when you work at a zoological organization, it is easy to buy into the mission, right? Like the animals are at the center. And when you can come around that shared vision, you really get the spirit of hope, you know? And yeah, it can be weird to think like, oh, the development person or the finance person or, you know, the HR person and kind of see their role in our collective mission of um, conservation. But everyone really does play a part and it's cool. It's cool to, to do it. It is. Know? It's so cool. And it's cool that like, I cheer when I hear of a training success for one of the turtles at Great Lakes 360. I'm not over there, but it matters. We're all one team. It's amazing. And like one of my favorite people that I've met through the podcast is the gift shop buyer at the Akron Zoo. Uh, her name's Colleen. She's amazing. And the way that she cares about those animals. And when something happens, when they lose an animal, you know, whatever, she cries just as hard as any of the keepers. And I think that has been such a cool thing to be able to talk about and feature and, and remind people um, it, it really is every one of those facilities. Mm -hmm. And when our guests come and they interact with the staff who, yes, maybe an animal care staff or even an admin staff, like, and they, they get a taste of that passion, it helps them better connect with our animals and our mission. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Thank you so much. Okay, who are you? Hi, my name is Chris Jenkins. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Natural Encounters Incorporated. Woohoo! Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, and uh, so here, conference, how's it been? Uh, it's been really, really good. This is my, I think, fourth AZA conference, and um, it's been really good. It's I've done this long enough now that I, I forget how many people I've forgotten. <laughs> and then when I get to see them across the room and, and there's sort of that instant connection of like, yeah, we haven't talked in five to 10 plus years, but uh, now we can catch up because we know enough about what the other person's doing that we can kind of chat about it. Uh, it's it's just super fun. And it's, it's a, a really, really big conference too. So it's huge. It, it happens a lot. And I, I try to remind people who've never been to anything like this, that this is sort of an order of magnitude bigger than some of the smaller conferences like the IWATE or the ABMA type stuff, which are amazing conferences, but this one is just, it's the big boy. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot no, of folks it's here. insane. And this one's big. Yeah. I, I heard through the grapevine we're over 3,000 people. I um, think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It seems seems like a lot. Yeah. Um, so, cool. What uh, have, have you been speaking at all or are you just taking stuff in? Or what's I did on? a little bit. Um, the first day I was here, came in late Sunday, and um, I'm a member of the Professional Development Committee. So, we did our executive session Monday morning and then um, had our open session for people to come hang out and learn what we've been doing after that. And then we we did uh, two fun things back to back. We did a panel called Pivotal Moments in Professional Development, where okay. I got to moderate a group of people who um, from all levels of the zoo field, from people in HR to people who are zoo directors and everything in between, talking about where professional development has made advances for them in their careers. And then that gave people an opportunity to kind of chat with them. And then we wrapped up the day with a speed networking event that we didn't know how it was going to work <laughs> because we didn't know how many people were going to show up. So we knew we were just going to give a, you know, picture speed dating. It's just that, but getting to meet somebody in the field, we said maybe 10 people will show up. Our, our greatest hope was that we would get like 40 to 50 and we right. got 80. Whoa. So we packed the room through furniture everywhere. And I basically just got to be a carnival barker for an hour, telling people when to move, telling people when to stop, telling people what their new prompts were. And it was super, super fun. And I think the most meaningful thing that happened was we had a number of first time attendees come up and tell us, Hey, I, we know the conference doesn't really start until tonight. And then tomorrow is when it really kicks off. Right. I've never been anywhere like this before. I don't have anyone else from my facility here. And now I feel like I'm not by myself anymore. And we're like, yes, Mission accomplished. That's exactly what we wanted to do. That's amazing. 
Now, you are here as a, a part of NEI, but, right. you know, as part of NEI, you also host a podcast. And, right. And we've talked about that before on the pod, and we talk about it off the pod all the dang time. Right. So tell me, um, have you been doing what I've been doing? <laughs> I think I've been doing less of what you've been doing because you're much more prolific at it than I am. But, uh, yeah, I did a little I did a little bit of uh, putting microphones in front of people's faces. So I had an opportunity um, earlier today to hang out with a group of students from Colorado out of state university who are in a master's program specifically about like zoo operation type stuff. Um, but it's broader than that. And, um, they came up, hey, this is so funny the way connections work in this. I, I was, we we're at the end of a panel and I saw Nikki Boyd from San Diego Love across Nikki. the room. She waved at me. And so I came over to say hi and I didn't realize she was in conversation with three or four people who had like sought her out. And then she saw me and she said, you know, Chris works for a place that has great resources for webinars and he has a podcast. And they went, Ugh. so I, I met a lot of people right away. And I said, I do have a podcast. I also have a microphone and you might have some time. So, so earlier today, I, I got 11 people. I didn't know. Uh, I don't know if you saw that there's like these meeting rooms all I've over the place. I've been using them to record. Yeah, yeah they yeah, say yeah. like, you know, occupied or yep. available. Yep. and like, doesn't say I can't use it. So, yep. oh, no, I've stolen. crashed those uh, probably 10 times. It's so nice. It's so nice. I have to just, oh, where's the least loud corner? Yeah, which is what we're doing right now. Right, Normally exactly. I break into those rooms. Yeah, no, it's been incredible. Um, I, I, I Most conferences don't have that. Right, right. I'm a big fan, big fan. Yeah, it's I'm glad good. that you were able to do that one. Yeah. It's really cool. Um is there what, what have you been taking away from the conference? Um, I, I mean, the the tract I normally seek out in this thing is, is animal training, given Shocker. what my job is. Uh, there's not a ton of it usually at AZA. So I'm also focused on the leadership side of things. So mm -hmm. there were a number of panels involving, you know, uh, next level leadership type stuff. Who are the leaders of tomorrow? How can we help support people? What does mentorship look like? So my reputation when I come to places like this is I am just... I try to be the ultimate secretary for my staff. So I, I'm guessing by the end of tomorrow, I'll have at least 40 or 50 pages worth of notes that I will tidy up and make available. Will anyone ever read them? Who knows? But uh, but they're there. And it's how I help process this information. And I've, I've met some people I didn't know before. So that's always like the high watermark for this, right? Nice, you you yeah. take away a relationship you didn't have before. Yeah, no. Some of the, some of the um, grabbing people and just interviewing uh, has, has just felt like... Um, like a bar hookup almost type thing. <laughs> like you meet a half hour later, you're looking for a room together. Oh. Then you do the thing and then you might never see them again. And it's quite entertaining. Oh, that is, right. that is how it has, it has felt to me. I can so, see that. I yeah. can see that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. More business <laughs> casual wear there, but, uh, well, yeah, you know, fair. I guess, yeah. I mean, I'm wearing a hoodie and jeans, so I, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. But yeah, awesome. Um, is there anything else you want to say about your time at the, the conference? Uh, it's just been super fun. I mean, it's uh, Calgary is a place I have, haven't been to since I was very, very young. My nice. wife is here doing remote work stuff in the hotel while I'm nice. doing this. So we're going to go spend a little time in Banff after this. I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, no, as, as always, these events are a whirlwind, but it's, it's super, super fun. So yeah. Been great to be here. Awesome. Well, thank you for taking the time to do this. No problem. Thank you. Yep. All, All right. right. So tell me who you are. My name is Elena Bell, and I'm the Senior Marketing and PR Manager at the Akron Zoo in Ohio. Yeah. Welcome back to the pod. Thank you. Lovely to see you here at the conference. You as well. Always fun. Um, how's your conference been? So far, so good. It's been really busy. There's always so much to do and check out here at AZA, but it's been really good. Good. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Um, now, I noticed that you were speaking. I did. I so spoke. what did you talk about? I spoke about the Akron Zoo's specific augmentative and alternative communication board. So this is something that people who are nonverbal, minimally speaking or language learning would use. A lot of times people think of it as a tablet. So it's a program on a tablet and you hit different graphics and it will audibly speak for you. Uh, we have one that is very Akron Zoo specific. So it has our locations, our animal species, frequently asked questions and things like that. And it's what's called a low tech AAC. So it's just a piece of paper front and back um, that we worked with a speech language pathologist to develop for us specifically at the Akron Zoo. Wow, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. I love that. Always on the forefront of uh, being inclusive. Yes, yes. You know, uh, I'm curious beyond what you spoke about, if there are any of the things that you've gone to that really stood out to you. Yeah, so um, I was really fascinated. I went to a presentation in North Carolina Zoo was talking about an app that they are developing for some of their DEAI efforts. And they're develop they identified three areas that they needed 
some programs in place for, um, and that was children ages K through 12, like school age. And then um, blind was another one and then deaf and stuff. And they're developing an app that is going to have different resources available for all three of those groups. And um, that's actually something that we've been looking into the Akron Zoo specifically for the blind population because we really, unfortunately, don't have any resources available at our zoo right now. Um, And so having like an audio tour or something like that. So it was really fascinating to learn that they are developing their own app. Uh, They did get a grant for theirs. So those those apps, they're just expensive, Um, but it's definitely, it was really fascinating to hear um, all of that and what they're doing for their DEAI efforts. Very cool. Yeah. And this is one of the things that I love. Like, did you attend any animal sessions, any animal specific stuff, or has it all been communication since that is your, I I tend to focus on the communications and marketing ones. Um, or the DEAI ones as well, because those more directly impact mm-hmm. my job. And I know people are like, oh, you're not an animal person. But we talk about animals in our marketing ones, too. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, um, some of my favorite stuff that I've seen here has been in some of the marketing stuff that mm-hmm. I've been at watching the amazing stuff because it all goes hand in hand. Yeah. I was just making the point that I think it's fascinating that, like, you're going to these things at the same time that there's, like, an animal nutrition session mm-hmm. going on. Yes. It's what's great about conferences. There's so many different areas and tracks, as they call it here, that you can go to. There's development, animal care, uh, research, technology, marketing, and PR, education. It's There's something for everyone. Yeah, it's really awesome. Mm-hmm. So what has your experience been like outside of the um, actual, you know, sessions? Well, so I am actually on the PR committee this year. Nice. Um, and so that has been really great. This is the first time I'm actually meeting these people I've been on a committee for for the last year in person. Yes. yes. And so it's That's been really moment. great to, to be out and connecting with other PR professionals at other zoos that I work directly with on this committee and actually getting to know them one-on-one. So I've done a couple of events uh, in the evenings where it was really great to get to know people. Yeah, no, that's always fun. And one of them is known as the... Muckety Muck. Yes, and this is a thing that we attend every year. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just for PR people to hang out. Mm -hmm. And the vibe there is very much you aren't doing professional stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, The first time I went was last year, and I was like... I know I was telling you this. I was ready to, like, throw cards at every moving creature, uh, even, like, wait staff. And uh, no, it's that's not the vibe. You just hang out. Mm -hmm. You just get to know people as people. And building those relationships actually helps you professionally. Absolutely. Because now I know I can reach out to so-and-so at this zoo and stuff and like, let's collaborate. Mm -hmm. Or um, another thing that PR professionals really need to have contacts at other zoos is when we're moving animals around, it's really nice to reach out to that zoo. Like I have this animal that's going to be moving to your zoo. How do you want to handle the announcement and trying to respect their need to make their announcement and give them the time and space and our need to share that our animal is leaving and things like that. So having those connections, I know I can just email so-and-so and and we can get this set up is really nice. And so having these events to continue to make those connections is great. Yeah, it is awesome. And I see the PR um, stuff, even just social media stuff evolving constantly with zoos. Mm -hmm. Like um, I loved how Fort Worth and Cleveland handled the baby gorilla situation Mm -hmm. this last year. Because when the baby gorilla had to leave Fort Worth, which they had built an entire campaign around banners and everything, they announced it together. Mm -hmm. And then once it got to Cleveland, they were still doing collaborative posts. So Mm -hmm. Fort Worth was actually getting this baby gorilla that people cared about Mm -hmm. on their timeline still. And it was just, it was so beautiful. And it's, it's all that, it's that collaboration. It's that relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No. And they did a fantastic job, um, with a situation that was out of everyone's control. Of course. Um, and they, yeah, they did a really nice job and being close to Cleveland, I was very like interested in the, how's Jamila doing today? How, and things like that. So, um, that was a really good story to, to follow along and a great, a great example. Yeah, absolutely. And also, I will just say, as far as the muckety muck is concerned, that bartender had a heavy hand. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. I had one drink and I was like, woo. 
Okay, yep. yeah. I had one drink as well, but I'm a lightweight, so. I am too. Yeah, no, it's, it's a thing. Um, but he also, I, I got a, a spicy margarita, and mm. there was so much salt. And I love salt. So I was just yeah. like, this is amazing. I was, I was here for it. I just got a regular margarita and was not expecting it to be spicy. So that was a new experience for me. It was yeah, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Um, no, cool. So is there anything else you want to say about your time here or anything? No. Okay. It's been so. great catching yeah, up. I'm yes. glad that we've gotten to hang out here. Yes, of course. It's always great to see you. Always and fun. We need to get you back at the Akron Zoo. Yes. I miss you guys. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Bye. All right. All right. So. Who are you? And uh, where do you go to, I was going to say work, but go to school. So I'm Jamie Cadis. I'm a head student curator at the Trevor Zoo, which is part of the Millbrook School in Millbrook, New York. Um, and it's the only high school in America with its own AZA accredited zoo on campus. Yes, and I am a big fan. And if you've been listening for a while, you all have heard about and from the Trevor Zoo. Um, and one of my favorite things to do is to get the perspective of the students, um, just because... Man, I cannot imagine being a, you're what, a senior in high school? Yes. And I know you guys have special names, but we're going with senior. Okay. And, um, and, and you're at the AZA conference. It's crazy. Uh, it's yeah, amazing. I, yeah. Yeah. So congratulations, Thank first of all. Thank you very much. Yeah. So what has the conference been like for you? It's been really great. You know, even like the annual programming meetings where it's some things that I don't understand, but there are a lot of things that also pertain to me, like very cool things. I went to one meeting having to do with how to create media for your zoo, even when you don't have new animals and new exhibits. And I've been making TikToks for our TikTok. Um, the time that I've been here, like here, come with us as high schoolers at the AZA conference. So going to that was really nice too. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. The media stuff here is incredible. I tend to go to a lot of those. I actually really wanted to go to the session you just mentioned, yes. but people were grabbing me and wanted to talk to me about the podcast and I couldn't. And I was, I loved that I had those interactions, but I was literally like, oh, that sounds like such a good thing. I took a page full of notes. It's amazing. Yeah. I love that so much. That's yeah. so cool. Um, so was that, would you say the one that stood out to you the most hmm. that you like attended? I liked that one. Um, I went to one of them talking about internships and the life of an internship and how to work with that. And I should have expected it to be like, this is what we do with our interns and not here's how you do an internship. Because it's not for it's not for people going to internships. Right. But obviously my mind didn't think of it like that. So I find you can still learn a lot though. Yes, like I, yeah. I you know, I run this podcast on my social media. I don't work at a zoo, but like sometimes I go to the animal care stuff and still learn. And then it even helps me understand how to talk about things, how to what I'm seeing, you know, how to ask better questions. So, yeah, I, I, you can learn a lot. But also, yeah, every once in a while, I, I have ended up at a, a thing, you know, I've, this is my third year in a row here. And I'm just like, oh, lol, I should have read that better. But, yeah. you know, that's cool, though. So you are a head student curator, you said? Yes. Cool. So that is a leadership role. It is. As well as a, you know, being at the zoo, as well as being in school. Mm -hmm. um, do you find it challenging to be a leader of your peers? Or is that something that you're good at? So when I think of being a curator at the zoo versus being at the zoo, there are two different things that you can do to be at the zoo at school. You can go and do zoo community service where we have community service, usually 25 minutes, uh, I think about five or six days a week. Um, and you go down there 25 minutes, you go with a curator who's been trained and knows how to work with the animals and you clean the exhibit, feed the animals. And then afterwards, you know, staff checks it out, make sure it's all good. Um, and it's just, it's a really great way to spend your time. If you're in community service for a year, then you can become a curator. And then your senior year, you can become a head curator if you want. Nice. But if you really, really love the zoo as much as I do, you can also do the zoo as an athletic alternative to your sport. Really? So two of the three seasons, instead of doing a sport, I'm at the zoo from three to five. That's cool. I actually didn't yeah. know that. And I, I've been there and talked to a lot of people at Trevor Zoo. That's really cool. This is definitely the best sport. Yes. Zoo is the oh, best 100%. sport. Yeah. And it's also an athletic activity. Like oh, you're green moving. Bags oh, yeah. The zoo, hay bales, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, no. When I first started volunteering just at Aquarium of Niagara, I was like, oh my gosh, I never get this many steps in a day. This yeah. is insane. Yeah. No, very cool. So, what has been your favorite thing about the conference other than the sessions? I mean, obviously, Zoo Day, where we zoo are day. right now, we is are? absolutely amazing. Uh, the icebreaker was amazing. There were rides, there was great food. Um, that was really, really cool. And another thing that I'm very excited about is that I'm taking a independent science research class this year where you can research whatever you want, but I want to pick the zoo because that's an amazing opportunity resource. 
Um, and I'm trying to figure out what animal to study and how to study them. So being here and seeing a bunch of different things that give me inspiration for that, because it's honestly, it's due in a few days. I need to figure that out. So it, it's really great to give me some ideas. So you, uh, you, you know that you have red pandas in your zoo, right? I do know that. Okay, so why do you have to think about this? Because that's the end. Like, look at them right there, right there. Wolves. What is right there? Okay, we have that's red a fair point. Too. That's actually a fair point. And y'all yeah. have done some amazing stuff with red wolves recently. Yes, we have so. four puppies. Yeah, I know. That's year. incredible. Have you had a chance to, to see them or interact with them at all? Or? Yes, earlier this year. The first time we went in with them and the second time we went in with them, I was able to go in um, and I got to hold a puppy one of the times. I got to put ointment on their paws. It was, it was amazing. Oh really. it was my adorable. gosh. I got to be in the, they put, they sent a picture of me to the paper. So I was in the paper nice. next to a red wolf. Yeah, it was nice. very cool. That's incredible. Yeah. And, and again, high school student. Yes. Teenager, but also learning at a place that is AZA accredited. So you're getting the stuff down. Yeah. I I love this facility so much. I'm just Me obsessed. Too. It's it's so cool that you guys get to do this. It's also cool that I get to eat free lunch every time I visit. Just saying. Um, but uh, I, I'm I'm curious. What do you want to do with all of this? Career What's next was? for you? Yeah. Oh, that's difficult. Of um, course it is. I I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Um, I know I want to do something involving animals, but whether it's animal science or being a vet or just husbandry and. You know, it's, there's, mm-hmm. there's a lot of options out there. And then, you know, picking a school based on one of those things, it's yeah, no, a whole totally. lot. Yeah. Totally. It's, it's, the cool thing is, you, you know, you don't have to get it right, right away either. You know, yeah. especially with the, the, the background that you already have, you're golden, <laughs> which is really cool. And, and you're the, at the only school where you can say that. So, like, that's awesome. Um, does working with animals in that capacity and, um, you know, again, at school... Uh, how has that impacted your conservation uh, views? Terribly phrased question, but you know what I mean. I what impact what has that mean. had on I'm your to... interest in conservation? I think it's definitely made me much more interested in conservation and much more mindful of the natural world and the things going on around me. Um, my school, Millbrook, has a program called Millbrook Engage, which is if you work for a non-for-profit over the summer, they'll pay you a little bit of money. Um, and Seriously? It's, yes, it, it's an That's amazing so cool. program. But for that, I volunteered at the Maritime Aquarium. We just won an award here. Yes, I did. It's very exciting. I didn't do that program, but I did a different one. Okay. Um, That's and cool. I got to learn a lot there, too. And it was just, like, introducing me to other AZA facilities right. and different places where I can work in conservation. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I love all of this so much. Um, is there anything else that you want to say about the conference, Zoo Day, any of the things, why you're definitely going to work with Red Pandas? No, I know. No, no pressure. No pressure. I think one of my big takeaways that I didn't know is that you can be a member of AZA and come to the AZA conference. I thought you had to be like, oh, an accredited facility and you're going with your facility. No, you can just come and see cool stuff. Get me. Yeah. I'm a member. And um, I, and being a member, you you get to, like, I am on the steering committee of Safe Red Panda yeah. because I'm a member, so I'm allowed to participate in things. And, um, yeah, no, it's really cool. Anyone who's listening, that's actually a great point. Anyone who's listening, if you want to join the AZA, come to conference, be a part of the it's conservation efforts. It's a great efforts. way to meet. I, also, I went to a networking session, and I sat next to people from the Beardsley Zoo, and I made friends. Dude, so, Beardsley is so great. Thank you, Beardsley Zoo. Beardsley is so great. And my I new love that. friends. That's so cool. Yes. And has, has everyone been welcoming, even though, or maybe because you're a, you're a oh, high school student? Oh, very much so. That's awesome. Yeah. Everyone I've talked to has been very interested and just happy to talk. Sweet. Yeah. Now, would you use your drink tickets on? That's the real question. Um, honestly, I gave them to Mr. Pugh and Ms. Bennett and Dr. T because they don't take them for <laughs> No, of course. So. I know. Yeah, that was that. I was didn't know that. I was very silly. excited about that. I think Milo, the other student here, had at least six Cokes the other night. Nice. Nice. So. Let's that's, that's, see. We're all getting crazy at AZA. Yes. Awesome. Jamie, thanks for taking the time to do this. Thank you very much. Who are you and where do you work? My name is Tiffany James and I work at Zoo Knoxville. Yeah. Welcome back to the pod. So glad yes. to have you. And we are here at the Calgary Zoo. We are looking at a red panda asleep in a tree. So that's Perfect. my entire recap. Great. Great. That's it. It's amazing. There's Thank red you for pandas. being here. Yep, Very high pandas. in a tree. That should be noted. That yes. This panda has survived not only the climb up but is sleeping and has not yet fallen out. No, it has flopped three times, like completely changed position since we've been here. It's flew flopped. They don't flip flop. They flew flop. Flew flop. I like it. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. So this is the high level of, of content that you're going to get at yes. the end of the conference. <laughs> um, so tell me, how has your conference been? Yes, this conference has been absolutely amazing. I'm obsessed with Calgary. Me too. 
partly because of the weather. I'm not going to lie. I think I would still love it in winter, but. Dude, I came yeah. from Fort Worth. It was 109 <laughs> no. one day. I don't like this that. This has been amazing. We looked up the weather in Knoxville right now, and it's in the 80s, and it is nighttime. So definitely like it here, but the conference overall has been incredible. Everyone here has been so friendly. The facility is nice, and it's just been like sunshine and daisies everywhere. It has. There, this has been. And and there's magpies, which I found out are my new favorite. So yes. you're hearing that in the background. Magpies are incredible. Oh, my God. I love Not them. Not great for interviews, but incredible. <laughs> I feel like they're mocking us. Yeah, I do, too. They make sense. They they make the connection between blue jays and, like, crows and ravens. Yep. It, it makes more sense. Yeah, no. I mean, I corvids them. are so good. Love um, them. Okay. So you have a thing on your thing. A, a, yes. a sticker. Uh, what's this thing called? Ribbon? I don't know. Yes. On your badge mm-hmm. that says Spiaker. So what yes. did you Spiak about? Yes. So last year um, I actually had a brain injury. So yes. you know me as a zookeeper. I worked with rhinos and chimps and all kinds of fun things. And that injury caused lots of issues for me. So I um, and now neurodivergent, and I had to figure out all kinds of sensory things. And I now work with humans, which is also awesome. Um, they're like chimpanzees, but they don't bite each other and rip skin most of the time most at my time. job, at least. Fair, fair. Um, so my presentation... That's because you do team building at Zoonox? <laughs> Yay! <now. laughs> but no, my presentation was on, like, navigating neurodiversity in the workplace as a person who now has sensory issues and then setting up teammates for success. So I had a really big panel, and it was incredible. That's awesome. Yeah. And you felt good? It went well? And I did. I was really nervous. Uh, before my head injury, public speaking was my favorite. And now I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to say. But the plus side of that presentation was I could just blame my brain. So if I, like, stuttered, I'm like, oh, sorry, this is part of it. Um, I didn't. But I, it was it was nice having that backup. So it made me, made me feel a little bit better. That's fair. You get, you yeah. get a little have a little too many drinks right. at a bar and you're like, oh, sorry, it's I just said that thing. It's my brain injury. Wait, your brain injury causes you to yes. call me bad words? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. I also feel like, oh, I really can't fold the laundry. It's my brain. <laughs> so my husband helps with that. So he actually came to this, Chaz. He did. It was great you know. to finally meet Chaz. Yes, I've only seen him in he's pictures. He's a celebrity, so he's, he's been in a lot of zoos, and everybody is always like, Chaz! And then I'm like, what about me? Um, he's also 6'4", so that he helps. He is. He is. But yeah, so he came and helped me manage brain things, and it's been it's been really fun to do this together. I'm really glad. That's yeah. really cool. What stood out to you um, as far as sessions that you attended but did not speak Ooh, at? Yet? Yes. Okay. So one today was on social media, actually. So really relevant. Um, and just the language we use and how that impacts the way people think. So I just thought that was really interesting. And it's definitely something that I'll take back with me to all my other jobs. Very cool. That's mm-hmm. really important. So um, we're at Zoo Day at yes. the Calgary Zoo, mm-hmm. Wilder Institute, Calgary Zoo. How has it been? This is the most incredible zoo I have ever been to. No offense to all the other zoos, which are also amazing. But it's it's fantastic. Everything is so natural. They've turned the weather to be just like the right temperature. Yeah, and they did a nice job with that. They did a very good job with those settings. Um, but no, it's wonderful. And all the animals seem like really chill in their habitats. And just the enrichment is great. The animals are great. The people are great. The exhibits are incredible. The drinks are great. Oh, yeah. yeah. At Zoo Day. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I have to tell you, so I had this cool experience. So there was a musician playing, uh, this great guitar. She was wailing. And it <laughs> caught my attention. So I wandered over because I'm like, that makes hard sense. to find really good musicians. Um, and I ended up with all of the leadership of the Calgary Zoo team. No pressure. And I did not realize <laughs> it and did not mean it to happen. Uh, but I, I actually had met one of the team members mm-hmm. and interviewed them for the podcast. Oh, that's cool. And so she introduced me to the rest mm-hmm. of the team. And I was able to tell them how incredible this has been. Yeah. And it meant the world to them. They were literally lighting up. It was awesome. They're so nice. They're we met so one nice. of their board members. You yeah. just came up and talked to us. And we're like, you're the nicest person. Yeah. And you love the zoo. And your zoo is amazing. Like, yeah, no, is it's, this real? It's incredible. Yeah, no, it's been amazing. <laughs> but on top of that, it's also just something that I love at these conferences. I had no yeah. intention of doing that. Yeah, definitely. And I heard a cool guitar solo, mm-hmm. which led me to have this conversation with someone that I had met earlier which led me to have this conversation with all these other people <laughs> and like be able to lift them up. And they're really interested yeah. in, in talking on the pod or something. Yay, and like, yeah. it was this whole, like just everything was so positive. And I feel like that's what this entire conference has it been. is. Yeah. To the point where I, I, I'll tell this now, just since we're talking rather than doing it later on my own, I had a major coughing fit <laughs> mm-hmm. in one of the sessions I was attending so bad that I had to slip out. I was like, I'm mm. going to, I'm interrupting. Yeah. And I was too embarrassed to go back in. Which yeah. I know I could have, but, but I, no, it was I get very that. packed and I was mm-hmm. just like, eh. So I went down 
to the exhibitors hall mm-hmm. and I ran into someone who I'd wanted to talk to on the podcast and we yeah. chatted and I talked to some of the exhibitors and made some connections for some maybe merch stuff down the road Ooh, and for I will a buy potential that sponsor hey, and just cool. uh, was asked to be on somebody else's mm-hmm. podcast. All these things happened because, <laughs> because I had, had a coughing fit. <laughs> and I was amazing. like, that has been this entire conference. And I realized mm-hmm. logically that you cannot say that that is a Calgary Zoo or, you know, yeah. AZA 24, whatever. But it has been. And the funny thing is, everyone I have talked to mm-hmm. has felt that way. Yes, absolutely. Has had stuff like that yeah. happen. It, there's so many connections that you can make with people. Oddly enough, the person I've seen the least is our new CEO. So like, I've seen him in passing, but I'm like, I'll see you later on. So like, making the connections here has been really great. And, like, That's amazing. Seeing people, like this is my third AZA conference, mm-hmm. second annual. Like I went to mid-year as well. But like I'm starting to recognize people yeah. and like be less intimidated by them. Yep. And I've realized that you can just go say, hi, I think you're really cool. And then they'll talk to you. And it's, it's really great yeah no it's been <laughs> incredible and yes. the connections i've made and the people that i've seen year after year and yeah uh, it's and the just, pandas yeah, they're also the incredible just here the they're very friendly yeah i'm yeah. sure they <laughs> everyone's lovely they're canadian pandas they yes when, when that little guy did the little little flop around mm-hmm. i guarantee you looked at the magpie and was like sorry <laughs> i have heard sorry a lot and it makes too. me happy and i'm trying not to like smile like stupidly know, at people right, so they don't right? think i'm laughing at them but i'm just like you bring me joy literally when i got off the plane <laughs> Somebody bumped into me, like mm-hmm. immediately went, sorry. And I was <laughs> like, I have again. landed, I have arrived. This yeah, is amazing. It's, it's pretty magical up here. I'm not going to lie. Awesome. Very nice. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say or share? Oh, gosh. I just want to encourage everybody to come to AZA conferences or AZAC conferences or any conference that your heart desires because this zoo community is is so welcoming if you just start asking the questions. So Absolutely. do it. Yeah, come hang yeah. out with us next year. Uh, it's going to be uh, well, Tampa. Mid year is going to oh, yeah. be at uh, Living Desert mm-hmm. out in California, yes. and then Tampa three host facilities. <laughs> it's Bush Gardens, underachievers, the, the Tampa uh, Zoo at Lowry Park, yeah. and uh, Florida Aquarium. Yeah, and it's going to be incredible. Yes, so, it's yeah, going to be wonderful, and I'm sure the drinks there will also be great. <laughs> yeah. Priorities. Yeah. Y'all, this industry has Edit this problem. Out. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> no, it's, it's all fine. We but enjoy anyway. the little things like free drinks. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. Fun. Oh, yeah. I had a margarita at the Muckety Muck mm-hmm. that was so much salt Made up on the name. rim. I know. But <laughs> salt is like my favorite thing. And it was just like this crusted rim. And I was like, ah, it was like a salt lick. I was like a deer. I was so happy. No, I'm I think the you were supposed to like gently lick some and then take a and drink. And drink it. And I was like, oh, got a bunch salt. in my mouth. And then I was like, I kind of taste the Yeah, you are a deer. Yeah. I yeah. had a drink that was straight maple syrup. And I was just like, this is fantastic. Nice. Sign me up. Did you have the maple on a stick? Heck yeah, I did. Oh my, oh my God. Yeah, I did oh that God. as a child. Oh, okay. That's middle so of New cool. York. That's so. so cool. Yeah, that's yep. like a big, like, mostly in Canada, but upstate New uh-huh. York thing. But for those listening, you just take maple syrup and put it on a stick and yep. then put it in like snow and it like kind yeah. of freezes you and put then the... it warms up and like explain. Yeah, no. it's just... yeah. So you can't put the syrup on a stick until it's frozen. Oh, duh. John. <laughs> Obviously. Logic. So you pour the maple syrup into the snow and then you shove the stick in it. Or if you're like a savage like me as a child, you eat it with the snow. <laughs> and it's delightful. I don't know what's dumber. You eating it with the snow or me <laughs> thinking that they magically poured syrup. You just pour I, it on. Hey, That's guys. Fine. I'm, I'm a long science week. communicator friend and uh whoops pandas are cool yeah, pandas are cool <laughs> that's all we know all right we're leaving it at that thank yes. you friend bye friends ah i loved having all of those voices and all of those perspectives and just how much the conference spoke to everyone there but in completely different ways is just so amazing to me. It's so inspirational. Honestly, I I loved this conference. Um, Wilder Institute Calgary Zoo knocked this out of the park. I love this zoo so much. It has climbed up my list of favorite zoos. It is very near the top, if not at the top now. I am blown away by this facility. Uh, the, The animal care, the exhibit design, just all of it is incredible. The people were all incredible. And I know you can get really stressed out doing something like this. So like, kudos to the team uh, at the Wilder Institute Calgary Zoo. Just amazing stuff. Um, And then yeah, my experience here, I mean, you already heard so much about it. I know we're going long. But like, y'all, this was so validating for me. Um, I, I, I spoke, you know, a lot of you listening know that I am on the steering committee of the Safe Red Panda program and that I um 
I am the co-leader of the public engagement work group. And so I'm one of four leaders on this, you know, incredible conservation uh, effort that we have started. And I got to get up in front of a room full of zoo professionals and share what I've been doing and what what my team has been doing. And um, it was such a joy. And I, I, I didn't talk about that much in any of the interviews. So I, I needed to share that with y'all. It, it meant so much. And people were coming up to me this entire conference. And they recognized me a little bit from the safe stuff, but mostly from the podcast. And that has grown every year. But this year, it was out of control. Um, like I mentioned in the one interview, I I, I really wasn't handing out cards uh, until people approached me. I didn't need to run up to people and, and beg. Um, and the crazy thing is, you heard nine other voices on this episode, but we actually had a lot more interest just for the recap episode alone. Um, I had talked to, of course, Sarah Lynn Bowser, who was such an amazing part of last year's recap episode, uh, and she was very willing to do it, and we just never found the time. Another favorite uh, recent guest, uh, Jay Pratt, was supposed to uh, sit down with me and chat, and we were never able to connect, which is, of course, totally fine. These conferences are crazy. Um, I actually did record someone else from a new facility, but I haven't been able to touch base with their PR team yet, so I'm hoping to be able to include that down the road in another episode, maybe in a Zoo News episode or something, um, because it's very worth hearing. But uh, we just we didn't have the time to connect the PR team. And I'm not burning any bridges. Um, and I could keep going. There were just so many people and so much interest. And yeah, we did some interviews and other than these like full length ones. And I learned so much and I met so many amazing people. And um yeah, it was just magical, y'all. So uh, I really hope that that you're able to find your way to a conference at some point. And um, I just want to thank literally everyone in the, all right, I'll say it, AZA community, we're in Canada, for being absolutely incredible. My heart is so full after this, and I am more inspired than I have ever been to keep sharing the message of good accredited zoos and sharing about the conservation work done by these facilities and uh, by these incredible humans. I was surrounded by 3,000 plus beautiful, beautiful souls this week, and it was amazing. So uh, yeah, absolutely incredible time. And um, yeah, I think that's really all I have to say about this. So before I go, I want to take the time to say thank you to all of my guests for this episode and for all of the people who were willing and we just never connected. Y'all are amazing. And I want to say thank you to my Red Panda level patrons, Dr. Laura Shank, Dr. Stephen Williamson, Barbara Bennett, Jenny Owens, and Kevin Williams. And of course, I want to remind you all that the word credits backwards is Steiderk. The Ross Safari Podcast is produced, hosted, and engineered by John Rossi. Editing and fact-checking by John and Dr. Zoe Rossi. Our theme song is Sevens by Nathan Burke, performed by Nathan and John. Interrupting John theme and additional voices by Taylor Isaac Gray. You can reach John directly on Instagram and Facebook at Ross Safari or by email at rossafaripod at gmail.com. Ross Safari is part of the Daydreamer Media Network. Now, stop listening to me and go visit a zoo. Zoe made fun of Chris Jenkins and I for sitting around and just being excited about our tiny microphones.